Well, good day, tubes. How's she hanging? Freaking finally a nice day here, and my solar light's getting a good juicing. That's good. I can tell with that thing, actually. It's funny. If it's had a bit of snow on it or whatever, and it doesn't get a good charge through that day, I can walk and be like by the car in the driveway, and the thing comes on. <laughs> when it's good, when it's good and charged. When it's not good and charged, I can do down and almost through the gate and then it finally turns on and sometimes doesn't if it doesn't have a charge at all. Uh, it's been a good light so far though, up there. Um, when they get a charge, they'll be fine through the summer and stuff, but uh, it's just you gotta get it in the right spot. Maybe a little more slope to the thing and then the snow wouldn't stick to it. But uh, with those trees there again, <laughs> all along here, back bags by the way, for my big vacuum. They, vacuum sucks. Um, with those big trees there, uh, you get you get a lot of shadow and it doesn't really get a good sun there, but the sun is changing now. It's getting higher in the sky, so it's actually coming above these trees. You can see it there, so soon it'll be above those trees. But then that time of year, I don't need sun on the road to melt it off, so it's like, really? <laughs> you know, normally when the days get shorter, the sun's just, well, it's hard to see, but there's a hydro wire there, it's an electric wire. It's just a little bit above that, so you can see how much higher it is now, right? So, that's kind of a good thing. So, anyways, uh, today, we're gonna crack the gar garbage open, a garage open. Wow. Garage garbage says the same almost word. Um, but anyways, uh, let's get it open here. What I want to do is, oh, I haven't had uh, old Boris going for a little bit. Kinda, sorta, don't really want to take it out on the on the uh, salt stuff here. Um, but what I want to do is get the little mini X out. Maybe throw on that big bucket. I don't know if this idea I'm having here is gonna work though. With, with, oh gee, sorry. With uh, my idea for uh, cleaning these paths out here with the Mini X. I don't know if it's gonna really work or not. Um. Poor Boris, I gotta find poor Boris first. I'm gonna have to take this guy out too. Oh good, the bucket melted, sweet. Uh, I need to find Boris. Need to find Boris. Some of the stuff I can put away now because I don't need it. Uh, you know, the fan and stuff, the vacuum can go back in. We'll get her all cleaned out anyways and then uh, we'll get uh, Boris, go Boris going again here, hopefully. But uh, give me a sec, I'll pull this stuff all the way, pull this guy out, and uh, we'll have a little more swinging room. This thing's not making that noise now. Seems to be all right, I don't know. Must have just been that cylinder. Must have just had a dry seal and I thought stuff finally soaked in maybe. So, a little strange, but uh, I did order some seal kits anyways, because regardless, it's probably gonna need them sooner or later. Now, it does leak down, I'll say. I don't think it's leaking through those seals, it's leaking through the actual control valve down here back into the system. There's little valves in there, so when I pull this back, it opens the valve, lets the oil through, and pumps the bottoms of these, and up it goes, right? Well, this little valve, way buried down under here, I think is getting kind of wore too. That's where everything all hooks into, and there's a bunch of hoses in it, and oh lord, and it's probably like a $4,000 part. <laughs> I got a price, could not believe it. A price for my seat. Now it come with, I think everything. I don't think it comes with these platforms, so you flip it over, it locks on. Comes with the metal plates and the, this, uh, where it flips here, it, it comes with all that. Um, so basically what I just flipped up here, it would come with all this, and I think it comes with this piece too. Um, didn't seem to see anything else underneath that. 
$2,200 from John Deere. I couldn't freaking believe it. <laughs> you can just get these cushions though, which I see now it's just a pull-off thing. And that's all it needs, everything else is fine. It's just the cushions are starting to kind of go, you know. But uh, the price for the cushions is $179 a piece. I don't know, those guys, I love them to death up there. They're really awesome guys to deal with, but it's their prices that just kills them. Man, it's like, why why do I need to spend $200 with tax per, per cushion? Like, holy crap. <laughs> no offense, guys, John Deere, I love you guys. You guys have been really good to me and stuff, but your prices are terrible. <laughs> and it's like, wow. It's like almost like you're taking advantage of people, you know, but I fully understand, okay? I, I, don't get me wrong. I do fully understand because they're a dealership, they're in business to make money. They're not there to break even or lose money, unfortunately. So that uh, all goes down to the customer again, right? So me <laughs> paying for the stuff that's really expensive, but unfortunately that's the way she goes. So, okay, got a little more cleaning to do. Then we can sort of find Boris here. Fire up old Boris. All right, let's get old Boris. Out of here, I'm gonna pull the gen out yet, too. Should actually fire him up. Need a cover, too. I'm just gonna fire him up and run in the back. Ah, I'll do it after. What the heck? I ran it not too long ago, so. Um, okay, so we gotta find Boris again here. Let's take the covers off him. Oh, Boris! So we're gonna try Boris on the. Uh, New trailer with uh, three point hitch on this. I thought that was scratch, which is greasy bits. All right, now I've unhooked the battery too on Boris here because. So he's got a diode set up on this, he said, and he's got a spare in the toolbox of uh, going to the alternator so it doesn't, uh, you know, kind of short itself there and kind of burn up your, your battery and he kind of thinks that that's maybe what it's doing. So we're going to try to get you in here really close and you might see a little spark when I touch it. See the little spark there? I don't get you any closer. No, nope. just gonna break focus. That's about it. So you'll see that uh, little tiny spark there. So something's drawn, and it's probably that diode. I just haven't bothered to have a look at it yet because, you know, I can uh, quite easily just unplug this. Or what I should get is actually one of those battery disconnect things. They're kind of handy usually too. So, uh, that should do. Now, let's see. This old Boris will come to life for us. Hey, hey! That rhymed. That's funny. Boris, come to life for us. We'll check the oil first too. It should still be fine. Bang on. Okay, let's try and get under here. Let's see if old Boris will start up. Make sure we got some, some gas in him too. About well, half a tank. Uh, there's a little fuel enter thing there too. I shut it off uh, because it was, uh, I think, evaporating the fuel out of it. Oh, Boris! It's been a while. Okay.
All right, so hopefully old Boris here goes low enough to uh, hook that fella on. Let's see here. Should. Should be all right. the Mini X up, get it unloaded here. Uh, I probably actually, yeah, I better get it off, I guess. I gotta change the bucket. Change over the buckets.
here come off it wouldn't we're gonna climb a little more of a mountain now should be good No, it's overdoing, that's it. A lot of work just for that. Oh well, let's get at her. So we got an awful lot of tongue weight up here. Uh, that thing you can see, it's going down, so better fire up Boris again here. Neutral. There he comes. Oh, I don't need to rub that high though. He's freaking out a little bit. It was still going up when I had her down. The other time they do that for some reason, I don't know why. I can't drive her like that. Why has it done that on me? Shut her down again, maybe. Yeah, now it's slowly going down. That's uh, these little tractors do that the odd time. The three-point hitch will just go straight up, and all of a sudden, woof! They'll, they'll let go. Good old technology, eh? See, that's right down. Hmm. Well, slowly going down, very slowly. Not like my weight up here is going to make much difference. There's only about, oh, I don't know, almost 2,000 pounds just on the hitch here, probably. Not quite, but. Uh, I'll fire back up, see if it keeps going down here. Now it's going back up again. Huh. Well, that's weird. I wonder if it's something to do with the weight. Like it's just not responding to my control up here. Very strange. We're gonna grab those blocks maybe and see if I can take the weight off it. I, I don't know what's going on. Okay, I think it's relaxing a bit now. Yeah, it's fully relaxed, so let's fire it up again. That hitch is right down. There we go. Just need it to relax, I guess. Trust these old tractors and their hitches. Yeah, it's weird. I don't, uh, I don't really understand these tractors and how they. How they operate like that.
up to the house now and uh, see if we can unload her up here. We'll drive for 25, 30 feet and then we'll unload it again. Super awesome. So there's supposed to be a pathway through here to the car. We had to have bother shoveling it because I'm lazy and stuff. So I gotta try to drive, I guess, through here first and then start scooping and back and then cleaning as I go. So we'll probably do this in a fast time video because it's probably gonna take me a few minutes anyways. As long as it holds, it might just end up sliding all around and being totally useless. So I don't know yet, we'll try. Here we go. That's a pretty awesome snow shovel. That worked actually pretty good. I didn't, I uh, wasn't trying to dig the ground, I guess. Hey, it's when you really try to dig into the ground that it really is hard on uh, trying to keep traction on that thing. So, but that worked actually really good. A little overkill for a snow shovel, but uh, hey, what, uh, what else are we gonna use it for this time of year, right? So I got uh, another little spot I wanted to do while I was up here. Pretty sick bucket, eh? It's way too 
too big for dirt though for this little guy, unfortunately. You can do light stuff, but it's not very good. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to do it in front of the, the, the uh, container here maybe. And get a good spot with you guys. Actually, you guys might be pretty good right over here. I wanted to kind of clean out there and stuff. Well, here we go. go that's a little better I had a heck of a time I thought I'd try to just open the latch here and I can't get her back closed again so I mean it's still locked it's fine whatever but it's uh, I couldn't shove her back so I need to uh, get it right open and then clean all the little deweys out something probably fell in not happy with that I don't know I probably actually well they hold the doors closed nice but I probably actually really don't need those things because um, it's locked here in the center between this door and this door and you know the only thing it might kind of open and this is at least really tightly shut so I'll leave them on but uh, really I don't kind of need those things on there but uh, yeah so there we go but uh, I cleaned her out pretty good works pretty good I was pretty happy with that so I guess we'll uh, load her back up now and uh, take her back and put her away we are good I do believe. This thing I think is going to have to get loaded on backwards. Uh, just because uh, I'll just do this for now so we're going forward when we're driving. Uh, just because uh, the size of the bucket I don't think that will fit in the front freaking really close, but <laughs> we'll just back her back on, I guess. Check 
technically try to push on this. That means I'd have to slide that thing up there, so like, yeah, that's not gonna work. Okay, let's fire it up again here, and we'll see uh, if we get this thing loaded.
Hey, I forgot how frustrating driving these tractors with the uh, not live PTO. Like this one here is live PTO. You can, there's no clutch on it though, right? But some of the newer tractors like these, they had live PTO. So when you push your clutch in, with this one, everything disengages. So everything on your three point hitch <laughs> just dies. Where on the other ones, uh, I think it was the nine end. I, mean, I can't remember which ones now, but you push your clutch in, these stay alive. So it keeps your implement up. So this is so heavy on this thing here that when I uh, when I go to uh, to back up your feather and the clutch, well this is like it's like pushing down because there's so much weight on the hydraulics it just doesn't hold it right. So uh, not not so good. <laughs> wasn't too uh, impressed with that. I was probably want, probably not going to use Boris too much for for uh, when I do my uh, dirt work and stuff with this trailer. Uh, it wasn't too uh, wasn't too happy about that. So. Anyways, Boris, Boris is a parade tractor. Not really meant to work now for pulling the plow or anything or anything like that. It's uh, just strictly a show showpiece. So uh, I'm going to leave it over here though for a little bit because I want to work on my trailer springs. I'm going to do that on the other side, I guess. But for now, I'm just going to pop this battery terminal off again figure out one day why it's doing that I'll get him over maybe to give me a hand because he did the whole thing so he would know what's what I look at him like wow that's a lot of wiring <laughs> but uh, anyways there we go so I got a little stuff to put away I've got to uh, pull the tractor pull this trailer into the back there and then uh, the tractor back over here again so Maybe we'll fire this up and then I'll just start, I'll put stuff away and then uh, probably, uh, probably call her a day. I got some other stuff I gotta do, some phones and stuff. So, uh, yeah, live PTO sure is nice. I'm not saying, we're spoiled now though. Got my phone calling done there. Got everything all put away. Everything's good there. So I uh, forgot to take the key out of the big tractor though. Better take that out. And uh, yeah, my phone calling there. This guy. I, <laughs> you guys might not like it when I say this, but I really hate doing genealogy stuff for people. It really sucks. <laughs> it's a lot of freaking work. And my myself, I get nothing out of it. But anyways, that's all right. Whatever. But uh, you know, people are like they kind of start taking advantage of you, right? That's the part I don't like about it, is, you know, they'll ask me, oh, where's George Jones? George, George Jones buried there. Yeah, okay, let me look it up, look it up. And then just as, he, just as you give him the information, he's like, oh, I got a couple other names for you too. Okay, I ended up looking up like 15 people for this guy. It's like, holy crap, dude. Like, that's a lot of work for me, because I got to go through all the files, and the books, and you know, he had their first and last names. Sometimes that helps, sometimes it doesn't. Especially if I'm looking up for George Jones and he was buried with maybe his wife's family and whatever and their name was Smith. <laughs> you know, so he's buried under Smith. Well, I can't find it then. It's not on a computer, right? So I can't just cross-reference names like that. But if he has a death date, a lot of people don't because that's what they want to know. When did he die? I can look up the death date through uh, our other register book. Let's see, we've got a book from day one in the office there. Burial number one. It was a 10 year old kid and he's buried just in behind the church back here somewhere. I've never actually gone to find it. I should, you know. But uh, so yeah, it goes right back to day one, which is like 1876. The old scripty handwriting is really cool and stuff, you know. So, uh, but unless they don't, if they don't know the death date, then it's really hard to look it up, kind of thing, you know. Because 
basically what I got in there is a file cabinet with a bunch of index cards with all the plots that were sold with the names and it's always under the last name of who bought it so if John Smith bought it and Mr. Jones and his wife were daughter of Mr. Smith that bought the plot and they get buried there it kind of gets lost in the shuffle right so if they don't have death dates it makes it really hard um, but anyways do what I can but you know I don't mind looking up a couple but when they're like give me like 15 names it's like holy crap dude really it's gonna take me all afternoon <laughs> This time of year I don't mind so much, but uh, in the middle of summer when I'm going nuts, yeah, no, I ain't got time for that. So I s still try to do it as much as I can, but um, usually I'll kind of wait until I have like a, a downy kind of a rainy kind of a day where I got nothing else really kind of going, right? And then I can start working on stuff like that, so. But uh, anywho, that's it for today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thanks a bazillion again for watching. We'll catch you next week. We're going to change those springs. If nothing comes up through the weekend for funeral-wise, we'll switch those springs over um, and stuff. I almost kind of think I'm probably going to have to do it outside anyways because it's pretty freaking uh, pretty freaking tight in that uh, in that little little garage. Or trying to uh, get all the uh, you know the trailer jacked up and stuff and stuff under supporting it and trying to work on it too so I might end up having to bring it outside and list it up with the backhoe or something I don't know we'll figure something out next week but anyways uh farm some Saturdays up tomorrow uh, I do apologize to everybody for what happened last week with the dark um I'm not going to explain it now I explain it in tomorrow's video so if you want to figure out and find out why what happened why it was so dark uh, have a watch tomorrow starts off dark and then I fixed it figured out what's going on but anyways, I think it's the game, honestly. It's the game screwing up. Um, because it never did that with any of their farm games, and it's doing it with this one, so I don't know. But uh, anyways, uh, yeah, that's up tomorrow. Good day of farming. Sunday, I don't know yet. I haven't done anything yet, so who knows. But uh, anyways, we'll catch you next week and stuff, and uh, have a good weekend. Actually, no, I won't see you Monday. Monday in Canada, I think it's Canada, maybe, yes. I think it's Canada-wide. It's called Family Day here, and uh, we're out here. Gosh, we're going to be doing something on Family Day. I don't know what yet, but uh, we'll catch you uh, probably Tuesday maybe then. Tuesday, Wednesday or something. Week's half over by then, eh? Holy. So anyways, we'll catch you. When we catch you, have a good uh, weekend-ish. And if you're in Canada, have a good long weekend-ish. And if you're, in, if you're in the States, ha-ha, work Monday. <laughs> but you guys get some holidays we don't get to, so... It uh, kind of goes back and forth, so. But uh, anyways, catch you later. Have a good weekend. Enjoy Farm Sim tomorrow.